Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss about ninth chapter in our grade 10 CBSE curriculum that is some applications of trigonometry. So the name of the topic is some applications of trigonometry. Right. So what are we going to learn in the concept called some applications of trigonometry? So basically here, what is the use? Otherwise, what is the application and how do we apply trigonometry in our day to day life? Can be studied by using some applications. And here in this topic, we are going to learn few new things which are exclusively related to this topic. So what are those few things, few new things? So those things are, see, when I am the person, I am called the position of observer, I am going to observe something. So when I am observing something, then definitely I will have to look at that object. So that object may be higher level than me. Otherwise, that object may be lower level than me. Suppose if I am not thinking anything, if I am not observing anything, then in general, as an observer, we see horizontally. When an observer is not observing anything, generally we see horizontally. See, this is what is the position of the observer. Okay. So this observer is not observing anything, then this is what is called the horizontal line. Okay, this is what called horizontal line. Because I am not observing anything as a position of observer. So this is what is the position of observer. Okay, position of observer. So now what am I going to do? I am going to observe one object which is higher level than me. Higher level than me means like I am observing the fan or I am observing the top of the building or I am observing the top of the tower, something like that. So this is what is the position of the object. This is what is the object. This is what is the position of the object. See, if I want to observe this object, then I will have to rotate my head up. So when I'm rotating my head up through this angle and I am going to observe this. So this is what is now my line of sight. What do you call that? Line of sight. See here, when I am observing this object, which is higher level than me is nothing but higher level than the position of the observer. Then the angle formed between the horizontal to the line of sight the angle formed between the horizontal to the line of sight when the position of the object is higher level than the position of the observer then the angle so obtained is said to be angle of elevation what do you call that angle of elevation so how do we define angle of elevation angle of elevation is the angle formed between the horizontal to the line of sight when the position of the object is at higher level than the position of the observer. Got my point? Then the angle so obtained is said to be angle of elevation. Now coming to that, I am going to observe one more object which is lower level than me. For example, I am observing some object on the floor. Otherwise, I am in the first floor and I am objecting someone who is there in the ground floor. Right? Otherwise, when I am on the top of the tower, I am observing someone on the ground. So here, this is the position of the object. This is what the object here now. Here, the object is lower level than the position of the observer. Then generally I see like this, but when I want to see something down, then definitely I will have to rotate my head down. See the direction that I am rotating. 
I am rotating my head down. So in general, when we put our head down, otherwise when we bend our head, so when you are only in depressed mode, right? So when you are in depressed mode, then only we bend our head. So that here the angle formed between the horizontal to the line of sight. Now I am looking at the object in this direction. For that, I am going to rotate my head in this way. So the angle formed between the horizontal to the line of sight. Now this is what is the line of sight. Line of sight when the position of the object is at lower level than the position of the observer then the angle so formed is said to be angle of depression. What do you call that? Angle of depression. So that is what the angle of depression and this is the angle of elevation. Simply angle of elevation means the angle is obtained when you look up. And angle of depression is the angle formed when you look down, as simple as that. Okay, so this way we can define what is angle of elevation as well as angle of depression. And after that, in this particular chapter, we need to remember a few set of things. Those few set of things are like, um, you know, uh, the things that I would call the trigonometric ratios. Sine, cos, tan, exclusively the ratios, sine, cos and then tan. After that, I need to remember the angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. Okay, the value of the angles at 30 degrees, 45 degrees as well as 60 degrees. Now let me know what is the value of sine 30 degrees. Sine 30 degrees is equal to 1 by 2 and sine 45 degrees is equal to 1 by root 2 and sine 60 degrees is equal to root 3 by 2. Similarly, cos 30 degrees is equal to root 3 by 2 and cos 45 is equal to 1 by root 2 and cos 60 degrees is equal to 1 by 2. And then the values of tan at 30, 45, 60. So tan 30 degrees is equal to 1 by root 3 and tan 45 degrees is equal to 1 and tan 60 degrees is equal to root 3. If I remember the values of sin, cos, tan, at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, then these things are very much useful in order to solve problems which are given in applications of trigonometry, right? So please do remember only these 3 into 3 is equal to 9 values for sine, cos as well as tan. Hope you understand. Let us try to get into the problems which were given in previous board examinations and how to solve about them, right? Now coming to the very first problem here given that the angle of elevation of a tower at a point is 45 degrees. After going 40 meters towards the foot of the tower, the angle of elevation of the tower becomes 60 degrees. So find the height of the tower. See in this topic particularly, we represent the objects, the height of the objects like height of the telephone tower, otherwise height of the building, otherwise height of the mountain, otherwise the height in which the aeroplane is flying, Otherwise, the height in which the glider is flying. So all these things can be considered as a vertical line. And always the vertical line is perpendicular to the horizontal base. Right? That is the very first thing that you everybody has to identify and observe, have to remember. And second thing is, when a person is observing, when a person is observing and the height of the person is not mentioned, then you will have to take as a height of the person, otherwise the person, otherwise the point of the observation as a single point on the ground. Suppose if the height of the man, for example, 1.5 meters tall boy is observing something, then definitely you will have to mention the height of the boy. Suppose if the height of the man or height of the person is not mentioned in the problem, then you will have to consider a small point on the horizontal. Please do remember that. And one more very important thing is, if you want to form angle of elevation, otherwise angle of depression, please do remember the definitions that either angle of elevation or angle of depression is formed the angle between the horizontal to the line of sight. So that the horizontal line should be there in order to mark angle of elevation as well as angle of depression. And in this particular topic, what is very important thing as per our CBSC rules? So the figure is very much important in order to answer any particular problem. 
Suppose if the figure is not drawn properly, then the solution will not be evaluated by the evaluator. So that figure is of a great importance. So if the figure is not drawn properly, I repeat, if the figure is not drawn properly, the solution will not be evaluated. Even if you answer the problem without any figure, then also the problem will not be evaluated. So please be very careful in order to draw the figure properly. Right? Let us start answering this problem. The angular elevation of a tower. Angular elevation of a tower, where the tower stands, the tower stands on the level ground. So I am going to draw a level ground. So this is what the level ground and this is what is the tower. See the angle of elevation of a tower. So this is the tower. Let us name this tower as AB is the tower. Tower is always perpendicular to the horizontal. Okay. The angle of elevation of a tower at a point is 45 degrees. So for example, this is one point. Let this point is P. The angle of elevation of the top of the tower at a point P is 45 degrees means what this is what is the angle of elevation so this angle is going to be 45 degrees am i clear and after that after going 40 meters towards the foot of the tower so this is the foot of the tower so moving 40 meters towards the foot of the tower for example this is one more point let it be q and since you are moving how much distance here? Moving 40 meters. So after moving 40 meters towards the top foot of the tower, then the angle of elevation is changed to be 60 degrees. So from here, the angle of elevation is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, this is what the angle of elevation. Then what are you going to find? Find the height of the tower. This is what you have to find. Let height of the tower is equal to small h. And I would like to tell you one more important thing that when you are given two angles, then definitely two unknowns should be there. When you are given two angles, two unknowns should be there. So what are the two unknowns? The first unknown is height of the tower is the one unknown. And how can you find the height of the tower? Is it, pos is it directly possible to find the height of the tower? It is not. Because if you want to apply trigonometric ratios, then the triangle has to be a right angled triangle. So how many right angle triangles are there in our figure? A, B, Q is one right angle triangle. A, B, P is another right angle triangle. Right? But you cannot consider this only triangle as a right angle triangle because there is no angle right angle. Got it? So A, B, P is one right angle triangle. A, B, Q is another right angle triangle. But here, this is the angle. This is the side opposite to that angle. You do not know this QB. So the very basic thing that you need to find first is the length of QB. Let it be some X. Okay. So now you have two right angle triangles. Use both the two right angle triangles and apply relevant trigonometric ratio in order to find H. Okay. I am going to start solving this problem. So in this, you definitely have to write what is that H and what are those angles of elevation and what are you going to find. Okay. So H is the height of the tower. AB is equal to H, that is the height of the tower, that is the thing that we are going to find. For that, we need to find the value of X. See, this is the angle, this is the side opposite to the angle, and this is side adjacent to the angle. So, which is the trigonometric ratio gives the relationship between side opposite to the angle and adjacent to the angle, that is tan. So, that I am going to apply tan for this triangle ABQ. So, that from triangle, from triangle ABQ, in this triangle ABQ, angle is equal to 60, so that I am applying tan. So tan 60 degrees is equal to side opposite to 60 is H divided by adjacent to 60 is equal to X. But what is the value of tan 60? Tan 60 is going to be root 3 by 1, which is equal to H divided by X. So by cross multiplication, I get H into 1 equal to H root 3 into x is equal to root 3x. This is one relationship between h as well as x. After that, I will take the entire right angle triangle ABP. So from triangle ABP, from triangle ABP, angle is 45. Side opposite to the triangle is h and adjacent to the triangle is 40 plus x. Right? So that tan 45 degrees is equal to tan 45 degrees equal to 
साइड ऑपोजिट टू फोर्टी फाइव इज हेच डिवाइडेड बाय अच्छे सेंटू फोर्टी फाइव इज इक्वल टू पी बी इट इज नथिंग बट फोर्टी प्लस एक्स फोर्टी प्लस एक्स व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ टेन फोर्टी फाइव टेन फोर्टी फाइव इक्वल टू वन व्हिच इज इक्वल टू द वैल्यू ऑफ एच इज रूट थ्री एक्स सो रूट थ्री एक्स होल डिवाइडेड बाय फोर्टी प्लस एक्स अगेन बाय क्रॉस मल्टीप्लिकेशन आई कैन से दैट रूट थ्री एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी प्लस एक्स व्हेन यू ट्रांसपोज एक्स टुवर्ड्स लेफ्ट हैंड साइड सो रूट थ्री एक्स माइनस एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी व्हेन यू टेक ऑन एक्स कॉमन एक्स इनटू रूट थ्री माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी देवरफॉर द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी डिवाइडेड बाई रूट थ्री देर फोर एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी डिवाइडेड बाई रूट थ्री माइनस वन आफ्टर गेटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स What do we want? Basically, we want the value of h. So therefore, h is equal to root three x. So root three into x is equal to forty divided by root three minus one. But please be very careful. In the final result, the denominator is not supposed to be an irrational number. So when the denominator is an irrational number, immediately you will have to rationalize the denominator to convert the denominator into a rational number. What is the rationalizing factor of denominator root three minus one? It would be root three plus one divided by root three plus one. So finally, it is forty root three into root three plus one whole divided by root three minus one into root three plus one would be in the form of a minus b into a plus b, which is a square minus b square. It means root three whole square is three minus one square equal to one three minus one equal to Two is the denominator. So can we cancel this two and forty? Two twenty sir forty. Therefore, height of the tower is going to be twenty root three times root three plus one meter. So at last, definitely you will have to mention the units of the height. So this way we can easily answer the problem, right? Hope you understand. Yeah. Let's move on to the next problem. So the next problem given here is. The upper part of a tree broken over by wind makes an angle of thirty degrees with the ground, and the distance of the foot from the point where the top touches the ground is twenty-five meters. So, what was the total height of the tree? See, in order to find what is the total height of the tree, you will have to understand one thing that what was the height of the tree before it was broken. So, the height of the tree before it was broken. Let us consider the horizontal. and uh, this is what the height of the tree before it was broken for example ab is the height of the tree before it was broken of course we do not know but some part of the tree broken by wind some part is nothing but for example till here a for example c this part ac is broken and the broken part bends and making an angle how much angle 30 degrees with the ground so this part bends from here this part bends for example this is what the broken part okay so this part and this part both are equal since it is a so a should be over here but i cannot use a two times so that is why i am using some a dash then there is no confusion at all so that according to the problem ac and a dash c both are equal and how much distance it is touching the ground at 25 meters so it is 25 meters now what are you going to find what was the total height of the tree total height of the tree means height of the tree before it was broken see ab is the total height of the tree let it be x and it is y so you need to find what is x plus y but once observe clearly here the length of ac is same as the length of a dash c right so that since it is x this is also x it is 90 degrees and how much angle it is making it is making 30 degrees angle so that this angle is going to be 30 degrees once you observe there is a right angle triangle that right angle triangle is a dash bc in this right angle triangle a dash bc angle is 30 degrees and 25 meters is the side adjacent to the triangle and what are required you need what is hypotenuse as well as what is the side opposite to that angle for that i am going to write the information given in the problem okay first of all let the total height of the tree let 
the total height of the tree total height of the tree is going to be what is the total height that is ab i am writing that ab as ac plus cb okay but ac is exactly same as a dash c which is equal to a dash c plus cb a dash c is nothing but x plus y which is equal to how much got it okay let us try to identify the values of x and y by applying relevant trigonometric ratios so i am taking triangle what is the triangle there from triangle a dash b c from triangle a dash b c in this first of all i am going to find the value of x in order to find the value of x angle is given adjacent side is given I need hypotenuse angle adjacent side hypotenuse which ratio cos so that I am applying cos 30 degrees which is equal to side adjacent to 30 degrees is 25 meters divided by hypotenuse is going to be x what is the value of cos 30 degrees which is equal to root 3 upon 2 which is equal to 25 divided by x so by cross multiplication x into root 3 root 3x which is equal to 25 twos are 50 so 50 is equal to root 3x x is equal to 25 divided by root 3 x is equal to 25 twos are 50 right so x is equal to 50 divided by root 3 this is the value of x and then i am going to find the value of y to get the value of y I can use angle adjacent side opposite side even I can use tan otherwise after getting the value of hypotenuse even I can use sine also but I am directly using tan so when I apply tan 30 degrees tan 30 degrees is equal to side opposite to 30 is y divided by adjacent to 30 is equal to 25 and the value of tan 30 is going to be 1 divided by root 3 is equal to y divided by 25 again the value of y is going to be 25 divided by root 3 so this is the value of y but what i want here i need to find the value of x plus y so therefore x plus y is going to be 50 divided by root 3 plus 25 divided by root 3 50 by root 3 plus 25 by root 3 is equal to 50 plus 25 by root 3 that is going to be 75 divided by root 3 since the denominator is an irrational number so i need to rationalize the denominator by its rationalizing factor so it would be 75 root 3 divided by 3 3 how much are 75 3 25 are 75 therefore the total height of the tree before it was broken that is ab is equal to 3 ones, 3 25s, so that it would be 25 root 3 meters is the total height of the tree before it was broken. See, I think you might get one doubt that 25 root 3 is there. Do we substitute the value of root 3 is equal to 1.732? Of course, you can substitute, no issues at all. Even if the value of root 3 is equal to 1.732 is not substituting and the getting the value 25 root 3 finally absolutely fine but keep one thing in mind that the value of root 3 is mentioned if the value of root 3 is mentioned in the given problem then definitely you will have to substitute over here if the value of root 3 is not mentioned then you don't have to substitute if you want to substitute you can substitute no issues no marks will be detected hope you understand and enjoy this class right so this is very much interesting and uh, of course very much useful concept also even there is a great importance um, of this topic in our plus one plus two as well as intermediate also understand thank you